Hi friends, I'm Chris from PhaseDoc. Welcome back for part four of our five-part series on industrial automation with an Arduino. Links to the entire series are in the description below. So far we've described how line benders work, and then we designed and built an automation controller with an Arduino. In this video, let's dive into the controller program itself. We'll run the actual program for you in a minute, but let's start with an overview of some key concepts to watch for as the program runs. First, different colors of plexiglass take different amounts of heat to bend properly, so the program needs to account for that. To do this, we've created different heating and cooling cycle protocols that the user can choose from. We found that two overall protocols work for most of the colors we use. One set of times for black plexiglass, which we use for all dark and opaque colors. It's labeled BLK everywhere in the program. And another one for clear, which we use for light and transparent colors. It's labeled CLR. We also have a test cycle, which is much shorter than the others. It's good for debugging, and it's labeled TST in the program. For each protocol, the program stores and executes two separate back-to-back -back timing cycles, one to heat the plexiglass, followed immediately by one to cool it. Depending on color, the heating cycle is typically somewhere between a minute 45 and two minutes and 45 seconds. The cooling cycle is pretty constant at two minutes even for all colors. Test is a lot shorter, just over 30 seconds for heat and about 15 seconds for cool. That lets us verify that critical program events are happening at the right times. The cycle times for each of these protocols is stored in the EEPROM of the Arduino. EEPROM stands for Electrically Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. And the beauty is that it retains its memory even when the Arduino is powered off, which is exactly what we want. We also have a function in the program that lets the user change those times for each protocol. Those changes are then saved automatically when you leave the set function. Once a given protocol is running, you'll see that there are two timers running simultaneously. A countdown timer on the left showing the remaining time in that cycle, and a count up timer on the right showing the overall elapsed time since the start of a given protocol. The count up timer spans both the heating and the cooling cycles so that you know the overall elapsed time since the start of a bend. When we demonstrate the program, be sure to listen for a number of audio alerts. These inform the user when something is about to happen. A four note melody at startup lets you know that the program is booting properly. A two note melody when you hit run to start a cycle lets you know that the controller heard you. Three high pitched beeps sound at 30 seconds before the end of a cycle. Two high-pitched beeps sound 10 seconds before the end of a cycle to make sure you're ready to raise or lower the folding arm. Four ascending tones at 3210 of the heating cycle alert you that it's time to move the folding arm up since the piece is hot enough to bend right now. And four descending tones at 3210 of the cooling cycle alert you to move the folding arm down since the part is finished. And with that introduction, let's run the actual program. When we start the Arduino, we get the startup melody, a splash screen, and then we're taken to the top level menu where we see three options, run, select, and set. Run initiates the active heating and cooling protocol, select chooses the active protocol that the other two options act on, and set allows you to adjust the heating and cooling cycle times for the active protocol. Before you can run or set anything, you have to select one of the protocols or you get an error. The active protocol is shown up at the upper right of the 1602 screen. Three dashes indicate that nothing is currently chosen, which is by default on startup for safety, to make sure that you purposely choose the right protocol for the material that you're currently working with. Let's make the test cycle active. We'll cursor right so that the focus is on select, then we'll hit the enter button to choose that option. Now we use the up and down buttons to scroll through the available options. Notice that each option shows you the currently set times for that cycle. We'll scroll down to test and hit enter to select it. Now when we return to the main menu, notice that test displays at the upper right telling us that it is currently selected and active. Let's run this cycle and see what happens. Press enter once when the focus is on run, that will stage the active protocol so that it's ready to go. 
you will see that the program displays the current heating and cooling cycle times for test as a double check to make sure everything is set correctly. Press enter one more time and let the games begin. You immediately hear the cycle start melody and coming up at 30 seconds, you hear the triple beep comes up pretty fast because we're running the short test cycle. Notice the count down and count up timers running. Observe that the count up timer will continue sequentially after the cooling cycle begins. We'll be coming up on the 10 second double beep warning, which makes sure that we're paying attention and that we're ready to raise the folding arm. Then we'll hear four rising tones at 3210 to make sure that we do raise the folding arm on time. Now the cooling cycle is running. We heard the 10 second warning there and we'll hear four descending tones to let us know to drop the folding arm. And we're done. The thing we didn't show you but you may have heard is that the relay for the heater wire clicks on as soon as we hit the cycle start. You can also hear it click off at the end of the heating cycle. So that was an overview of the run cycle. Let's see how to set the individual times for a given cycle. Cursor right until set has the focus and press enter. Focus on this screen is shown by the left and right carrots to the side of each timing element. For reference, we're at zero minutes, 35 seconds for heat, zero minutes, 16 seconds for cool. We'll make changes and see if they take effect. On this screen, we set minutes and seconds, first for the heating cycle and then for the cooling cycle. You can use the up and down buttons to increase or decrease a given value. We'll go to one minute for heat. Go right to move to the second setting for heat. And let's change that to 40 seconds. Go right again. Minutes for the cooling cycle. We'll change that from zero to one. Go right one more time, and we'll set that from 16 to 20 seconds. Once you're satisfied with your new values, press enter to save your values to EEPROM and exit this function. We'll go back to run and see if our changes took effect. And in fact, it looks like they did. So that's a high level but pretty complete look and how the program is structured. Now, let's take a look at some of the logic inside the program itself. As soon as we first gave this presentation, we were asked to make the code for the program available for download. We think it might well be helpful, so we've posted it on our website with some strong disclaimers. Most of the code for writing to the LCD and managing the menus was scraped from multiple sources on the web, so while it works, it's not the cleanest, best documented code around, be advised. The code that I did write was not designed for public consumption, so it's not overly documented and the logic will be difficult to follow in some places. It needs to be improved and refactored, but that'll have to wait for a calmer day. And given our heavy commitment to our startup, I cannot help anyone modify or adapt the code. You're on your own. Having said that, you're welcome to download the code from our website. We do ask that you register with your name and email in order to do so. There is one custom library which I wrote to handle the speaker output. It's included in the download. And the other libraries are commonly available. You shouldn't have any trouble finding and downloading them at all. Speaking of libraries, you will need the following. Analog multi-button for processing button presses from the LCD keypad. Liquid crystal to write to the LCD. AVR EEPROM to read and write to the EEPROM on the Arduino, the standard input output library functions. Audio Tools is a library of functions I wrote to create the sounds I needed from the speaker. One important and underdocumented feature of this library is that some of the functions return the amount of time the function consumed while creating a given sound. That's because sound generation takes place during a countdown and we want to keep those timers as accurate as possible by accounting for the time used by the sounds. Pitches.h is needed in my audio tools library. It just defines standard musical notes to be used for sound generation 
and we've included that in the download file. We hope the community will take this basic system and expand it to different applications with enhanced functionality. For instance, controlling more elements of your machinery with the extra relays in the relay module is an obvious first step. And this is a very simple open loop system with no feedback mechanisms. One obvious improvement is to add sensors to the Arduino that can respond to its environment. This greatly increases your system's capabilities and reduces operator workload. And you can easily apply these enhancements to a wide variety of systems. Ovens and kilns of all kinds are common in shops and maker spaces. Presses of different types. And really, any moderately complex processing machine is a good candidate for this approach. Just use your imagination. If you do take this further, kindly share it with a greater community of engineers and makers. We'd love to hear where you can take this. That concludes our examination of the program logic for the controller. Stay tuned for our final chapter in this saga when we'll look at tips and tricks to help with line bending and other potential applications of this system. Thank you very much for watching.